traditional food initiatives are sweeping Indian country to combat the diabetes and obesity epidemic that affect the American Indian population. However, these initiatives are based mainly on tribal lands, making one wonder where the urban native goes to learn and access traditional foods. I talked to indigenous community members of Tucson about their thoughts on maintaining a traditional diet. Foods, you know, the, the traditional foods, they say that the food that we prepare is um, kind of like the footprints of our ancestors. That's what's been left to us, you know, that's what's passed down from generation and it's part of our culture. Do you think it's important to follow a either indigenous diet or a traditional food diet? It's important to really follow traditional, but at the same time it's really hard to do. You know, we uh, struggle to keep our, our diets. Living in the city, it's really not that abundant to just go like grocery stores and get it. I do know that there are a lot of initiatives that are going on on tribal lands, and that's mm -hmm. great where they have gardens and, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but I, I wonder, because especially a lot of the Native population lives off the reservation, mm -hmm. and how we're able to continue yeah. to maintain that when we're not, yeah. we're not there. Yeah, it, it, it really takes a really heartfelt personal effort to try and maintain it, because you can't really maintain it fully, but if you really put that effort in it, you'll find, you know, foods around instead of the soda, instead of the junk food, instead of all that, you know. For me specifically, I, um, I focus a lot of my energy towards staying away from like highly processed foods. Um, the added part too was just kind of like the untraditional foods that are foreign to my diet and what has been foreign to our diet, largely as like indigenous people. Um, I feel that like our, our history and our traditions and our culture specifically like even within our DNA um, our bodies don't recognize foreign foods till this day and I think that the proof within that is like the statistical research that proves how unhealthy the majority of like our population is um, when it comes to like our our diets and what we eat. According to a 2017 Centers for Disease Control Prevention National Diabetes Statistics report American Indians still have the highest prevalence of diabetes in the nation. Furthermore, the Office of Minority Health reported that American Indian adults are 50% more likely to be obese than non-Hispanic whites. The key to reducing these disparities are diet and nutrition. I spoke with Rainbow Marie Lopez, a member of the Tana Atham Nation. She has a master's in American Indian Studies for Law and Policy from the University of Arizona and is a certified nutrition therapist practitioner. I really advocate to eat where you come from, eat what your ancestors ate, and especially try and eat what's in your environment. Um, there's a reason why you come from where you come from and the food, there's food there, you got back, rich bacteria there, minerals, um, you need that as a, as a person, it's very important to actually have that. The San Javier Cooperative Association Wild Foods Community Harvest Program on the Tahana Atham Reservation, located just 25 minutes outside of Tucson, aims to make traditional foods more accessible in order to achieve health. My name is Phyllis Valenzuela. I am a member of the Tahana Atham Nation and I reside here in San Javier. Here we have um, red tepary beans. Uh -huh. um, this bean, along with the white one, have been around for over 4,000 years and we're still growing it today. This was one of the reasons why um, this farm was uh, built or established uh, because after the lawsuit that um, the landowners won, they wanted to see the traditional foods being grown and um, that's why we're still growing them today. They have the little uh, co-op farm in Santa Vera that we mostly go to for our beans and stuff like that. So we have that. But as far as our traditional diets, you know, we gotta go find the um, organic meats. 
rabbits and that's really there are some places but they're they're really you know expensive it's not just food that's wrapped up in there there's culture in there there's um almost like a ceremony wrapped up in there for indigenous people um the thoughts and the prayers that go in, into there makes it again even more rich even more biodynamic um, then when we prepare food here where it's unconscious um, it's already it's processed um, we're in a hurry we're not thinking about you know these type of things all of those things that you put into your food actually makes a huge difference and puts extra nutrition and an energy into your food that you're not going to get if you just got it you know, in the grocery store or whatever. Yeah, it's not or, like a microwave. It, exactly. Yeah. If this is part of your culture and like, if you have a traditional diet, which everybody does, you know, it's just pertaining to your background and like speaking to your elders and getting that information from them. And like my Nana has like really old recipes that she has saved too. And sometimes like I'll look through those or she'll show me like, look at this. And so, so yeah, I mean, if you have the drive for it, um, the resources are definitely there to tap into. Um, it's a great lifestyle, you feel good, you look good, um, you have more energy, you sleep better, um, it's, it's just good all around. So.